Hello everyone, it's me, John Lorden. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And I don't know if you guys are excited, but I'm quite excited. We get another Star Wars movie released in the US today. Um, however, this topic, not really about the Star Wars film franchise. Uh, we are going to look into a series of deaths that happened in the 1980s. Um, most of them have been categorized as suicides. However, many people believe that they might have been homicides related to people working on the Star Wars Strategic Defense Initiative. And here's a little picture behind me, if you don't remember what that is. That was a program that was proposed by Ronald Reagan. And here we see a cartoon of him in what looks kind of like an X-Wing fighter. Uh, looks like it's being held up with defense cuts. Pretty clever there. He's also asking Scotty for more power to the phasers. Ooh, crossing Star Trek and Star Wars. I don't know if that's good. As well as saying to fire the photon torpedoes. The Star Wars SDI program was a really interesting way to try to address the concerns of fear of nuclear war. Uh, essentially, you had a system of satellites and other um, accompanying systems that would look for ballistic missiles being launched and try to incapacitate them before they hit their target. Uh, I believe that they were using, or at least considering using, laser technology to do that. You have to figure that um, to try to catch a missile as it's in flight is a very tricky proposition. There is only a, a very slim amount of time that you have to work with to try to track that thing, get another projectile to it, and then stop it in some way. So um, it was a very tricky proposition right from the start. Now, the US had kind of subcontracted different aspects of this program to many different companies, uh, including some companies that were in Britain, and that is where most of these deaths did take place. It's pretty interesting looking at a case like this because um, it being in the 1980s and being associated to such uh, a big thing that was going on in the 80s in terms of the Star Wars SDI program, you can still find some articles, some articles that have been put on the internet retroactively from the LA Times, the Chicago Tribune, um, that are talking about this specific it's kind of a conspiracy theory, but it really got a lot of attention from national publications as well. The same questions that were raised back then are still open and unanswered at this point. So let's dive into it together and see if we can try to get some clarification in terms of what this theory is, who, it's, who it affected, and what answers, if any, we could try to glean from the information available. So a lot of the deaths center around a company called Marconi, and Wikipedia even has a page specifically about this Marconi scientist deaths conspiracy theory. Unfortunately, it is, it's practically a non-page. There is literally one sentence about it. Let's go through it. The GEC Marconi scientist deaths conspiracy theory states that between 1982 and 1990, 25 British-based GEC Marconi scientists and engineers who worked on the Stingray Torpedo Project and other United States Strategic Defense Initiative related projects, better known as Star Wars, died under mysterious circumstances. And you can see they don't even list the deaths here. Um, they do have links to some articles, but that is about all they have on it. In terms of SDI, or just trying to be a little bit more clear about what it is, let's read a little bit from Wikipedia here. The Strategic Defense Initiative was a proposed missile defense system intended to protect the United States from attack by ballistic strategic nuclear weapons. It was first publicly announced by President Ronald Reagan on March 23, 1983. SDI was nicknamed largely in the mainstream media as Star Wars. In 1987, the American Physical Society concluded that a global shield such as Star Wars was extremely ambitious and with existing technology not directly feasible for operational status, and that about 10 more years of research was needed to learn about such a comprehensive and complex system to set up and make it fully operational. However, the United States now holds a significant advantage in the field of comprehensive advanced missile defense systems through years of extensive research and testing. The US and the UK also have laser weapons, as well as 360 degree laser shields in development, which are expected to be ready for military use as early as 2020. So as you can see, this appears to me to have been a good idea. Um, they have continued to develop on it, and it looks like we will have some real-world implementations of weapons 
based on this design or this initial thought way back in the 1980s, ready to launch here within four or five years. In terms of looking into the deaths around this, um, I found at theunredacted.com a very good article. Uh, I also found several other places where there are lists of these deaths, uh, who it was, how old they were, what type of work they were doing, and then some of the uh, conditions around how they died. But this article really raises some very good questions about the conditions of them dying in particular and notes how some people died in very similar fashion to other people. So I want to lean on this article quite a bit and then we'll fill it in with some information from other sources as we go forward. Between 1982 and 1990, a cluster of strange and often grisly deaths amongst scientists and computer experts working in Britain's high-end tech defense industry baffled investigators. Most of the victims were computer scientists working for Marconi Electronic Systems and related companies on top secret defense projects, including the U.S. Strategic Defense Initiative. The deaths seemed to start in March of 1982 with senior computer scientist Dr. Keith Bowden, then a contractor for GEC Marconi. He apparently drove his car across a dual carriageway and plunged off a bridge, dying instantly. The police said that Bowden was drunk and driving too fast, but friends who were with Bowden that night denied that he had been drinking. His family wound up hiring a private uh, accident investigator to look over things, and they examined the wreck, and they came to the conclusion that somebody had actually swapped his normally pristine tires on his rover with a set that were worn and old. Also in the links below you're going to find some coverage from 2020 about this case uh, with a very young Stone Phillips in it by the way uh, and he actually speaks to Bowden's wife and they have footage of the tires that were found on the car and you can tell these tires were extremely worn, um, very very slick and I'm surprised that they actually didn't just blow out on their own. Some of them are actually down to the thread wiring where you can, all the rubber has, has basically rubbed away. Three years later, radar designer Roger Hill killed himself with a shotgun at his home. Later that year, Jonathan Wash died after plunging from a hotel window. The coroner returned an open verdict. Uh, essentially what that means is it's not a firm conclusion, it is left open. More puzzling still was the death of Vimal Dajibai. 24, who jumped off the Clifton Suspension Bridge in Bristol in August of 1986. Dejabai had been working at Marconi on computer control systems for Stingray torpedoes. Another open verdict was returned. Dejabai was found with his pants around his ankles and a needle-sized puncture wound in his buttock. The Bristol coroner was concerned by this, quote, it was a mystery then and it remains a mystery now. And here we have photos of several of the people that died during this period. But let's continue. Uh, two months later, Arshad Sharif, 26, another computer scientist who worked on satellite guidance systems at Marconi, traveled to Bristol, tied one end of a ligature to his neck, the other end to a tree, then jammed his foot on the accelerator of his car and decapitated himself. A relative summoned to identify the body noticed something suspicious about his car, what appeared to be a metal rod was lying on the floor of the car next to the accelerator had it been used to wedge down the pedal. Um, I would certainly wonder that myself. If you do consider the theory that these are um, staged killings, um, perhaps he could have been incapacitated in some way but was still alive. Uh, someone else tied the rope between the tree and his neck and then set this bar on the pedal so the car would go off in a direction and kind of finish the job. And another interesting thing about both of these deaths, uh, which the coroner is noting here, this is past coincidence. I will not be completing this inquest until I know how two men with no connection to Bristol came to meet the same end here. The article continues on stating that the coroner never did figure out why, but they did apparently trace that these two men were working on a secret project together called Cosmos, which was an underwater guidance system. Now we get to 1987, starting with the death of Richard Pugh, another computer expert in the defense industry. Pugh's body was found in his flat, his feet bound, a plastic bag on his head, and a thick rope coiled around his body. 
The coroner's verdict was an accident due to sexual misadventure. Days later, another scientist engaged in top secret work, Dr. John Britton, died in his own garage of carbon monoxide poisoning. The next month, another Marconi engineer, David Skeels, also died of carbon monoxide poisoning found in his car with a hose pipe connected to the exhaust. Also in February, two more defense engineers and scientists died, Victor Moore from an overdose and Peter Peepel, yet another victim of carbon monoxide poisoning. Peepel's death was particularly troubling. Apparently, uh, he had a nice night of socializing with some friends of his and went out to the garage to pull the car in. His wife found his body the next morning and the investigators were concerned by um, how he could have maneuvered himself under the car the way that he was found. As a matter of fact, that 2020 episode that I told you about um, has a graphic that details it pretty clearly. Here we see the car, we can see his body laying directly below it with his face very close to the tailpipe. Uh, but what they're wondering is this garage door was closed and locked. So how would he have slid into that position? Um, I do think potentially he might have slid in from the side, but if this is accurate, there's not even that much room on the side. I would assume there's enough to open the door and get in or out. That might be enough to crawl in under there. Um, I don't know exactly what make this car is or how high this is, but uh, they were at least troubled with the explanation of how did he get his body into this position and then get that door closed, get it locked, and end his life. Also in that case, the coroner came back with an open verdict. John Whiteman supposedly drowned himself in his bathtub, the body surrounded by pills and empty alcohol bottles, yet the autopsy revealed no trace of drugs or alcohol in his body. In March, David Sands, a senior scientist working on computer-controlled radar at a Marconi sister company, made a sudden U-turn in his car and crashed at a high speed into an empty cafe. I read a little more detail about that accident and he was on a perfectly straight road and that's what makes that U-turn very hard to understand. Outside of that, there was two five gallon cans of gasoline in the car with him that pretty much exploded on impact. In another strange twist, he was wearing his seatbelt. Not sure why you would keep your seatbelt on if you were really trying to kill yourself. The car was completely consumed by a fireball. Sands was only identified with reference to his dental records. In April 1987, Mark Wisner, 24, was found dead with a plastic bag on his head and cling film wrapped around his face. The verdict was death by sexual misadventure. So once again, we get kind of a few reoccurring themes here. People that seem to be um, obstructing their airway by sexual misadventure and other people that seem to be killing themselves with car fumes. The previous year, Marconi purchased defense electronics firm Plessy. Within a month between May and June of 1987, two of its scientists were dead, Michael Baker, 22, in May, and Frank Jennings, 60, in June. At the start of 1988, lab technician Russell Smith, 23, jumped off a cliff in Cornwall. A senior computer engineer at Marconi, Trevor Knight, was the victim of yet another suicide by car exhaust pipe. In August, there were two gruesome electrocutions. Alistair Beckham, 50, was a computer engineer who it's believed was working on a top secret pilot program for America's Strategic Defense Initiative. After some light Sunday afternoon gardening, Beckham retired to his shed, attached wires to his chest, pushed them into a power socket, and with a handkerchief jammed in his mouth, hit the power. Just hours after his death, men from the Ministry of Defense arrived at the scene and took away several documents and files from Beckham's home. Marconi director John Ferry, 60, jammed stripped wires into his own tooth fillings and electrocuted himself. Several MPs and trade union leader Clive Jenkins called for an inquiry into the deaths. Jenkins wrote that the deaths were statistically incredible and spoke of the concern among his members. The conservative government of Margaret Thatcher dismissed calls for an inquiry claiming the deaths were not statistically unusual and were just coincidences, perhaps exacerbated by high levels of stress in the defense industry. Professor Colin Pritchard, a noted expert in mental illness and suicides, thinks at least some of the deaths were statistically uncommon. Pritchard cites the cases of at least four of the men that share unusual elements. 
All four men had complained to friends and family that they had been tasked strange, impossible, and unscientific tasks by their employers. All four men committed suicide in incredibly violent and bizarre ways, and all four of the men had also recently found new jobs and were preparing to leave within days of their deaths. So even if you're trying to look at this large section of people that are supposedly killing themselves, I do think that that grouping of four in particular um, shows that something else might be going on here. I mean, why are these guys going to work on finding new positions, secure those positions, and effectively be a day or two away from notifying their management that they're actually leaving when they decide to off themselves? Just the logic behind all that doesn't seem to really work for me. We also have a section dedicated to the theory about sexual misadventure. Several of the deaths were put down to sex games gone wrong, but intelligence expert Conrad Black says death by sexual misadventure is a common method of disguising murder in the world of espionage. Not only does it provide a disguise for the actual means and method of death, it trashes the reputation of the victim and blunts the energy of any subsequent investigation. For any of you longtime brain scratchers out there, do you remember the case that we looked into about Gareth Williams, the guy that seemingly put himself into a bag, zipped it up and suffocated, and then when they found his house, he had all this cross-dressing stuff all over the place? Think about that case now, considering this information. This article at the Unredacted also goes into the theory of them possibly being killed by another country. Attempting to undermine an enemy's defense capabilities by murdering their scientists is not uncommon. The US, UK, and Israel have all been known to strategically stage accidents to remove high-ranking enemy scientists for political ends. Many of the Marconi scientists were involved either directly or peripherally in the Star Wars program and other related projects. Could their strange deaths have actually been a series of Russian or East German orchestrated murders designed to scuttle the SDI? And then on the other side of that theory, are these suicides natural? Is it due to stress? Suicide is the most common form of death in men aged 20 to 49, the age bracket into which almost all of the Marconi scientists fell into. Some of the widows commented on how their husbands were unable to talk about their secret work. If they were having trouble with their jobs, they might have not been able to discuss the situation with their loved ones. I did just want to point out, I don't know when this article was written. There's no date on it, so I don't know about the stats and the information about uh, if suicide is still the leading cause of death among people in that particular age range. But it seems to line up with info and research I've done uh, previously related to groupings of death cases kind of like this. If you guys saw my video on the holistic doctor deaths, um, you know, this seems to be a bit of a trend in terms of conspiracy theories where people will start identifying a group of some type and them dying. And I do at least appreciate that people are trying to look at the statistical significance of it because it's hard to determine the truth of this matter without understanding is this really just a normal occurrence or is there a spike in the stats here that shows us, hey wait, no, these guys in particular, they are dying at a much higher level than the normal risk for people killing themselves um, working in this industry or being these particular ages or being this particular sex. There's all kinds of criteria that you can kind of cut it down by and look into it with. So how did the U.S. respond to all this? We can jump over to an article at rents.com. This looks like it is from uh, 2007. This wave of suspicious fatalities in the ultra-secret world of sophisticated weaponry has not gone unnoticed by the United States government. Late last fall, the American Embassy in London publicly requested a full investigation by the British Ministry of Defense. The Pentagon refuses comment on the deaths. However, according to Reagan administration sources, quote, we cannot ignore it anymore. The CIA may suspect the deaths are an indication of security leaks, that Star Wars secrets are being sold to the Russians. Perhaps these scientists had been blackmailed into supplying classified data to Moscow and could no longer live with themselves. One or more may have stumbled onto an espionage ring and been silenced. Back to thinking about those four particular guys that were going to leave their positions, uh, maybe it's a possibility that they were providing information as well 
they had told the people they were providing it to, hey, I got a new job, I'm getting out of this, and maybe they were silenced in that way. Uh, just something to think about. As NBC News London correspondent Henry Champ puts it, in the world of espionage, there is a saying, twice is coincidence, but three times is enemy action. Now, Snopes does not have an official article on this, but their message board does have a bit of a short discussion on it, and I just wanted to point out some comments from user Dogwater. So perhaps the question boils down to, is the text accurate in the deaths in as much as they were suicides? Statistically, is that number of deaths amongst a given number of people an anomaly? And are there any casual factors that would lead to suicide in this particular line of work. Um, pretty much kind of echoing what I had talked about before when you're trying to look into this. And it's hard because trying to find information on the number of uh, employees related to the defense industry, particularly in Britain, particularly at that time frame with that age range and what their causes of death is, um, that is not the easiest information to search out. There is a user called Reverend365 over on a Reddit thread about these cases that uh, says that he has some information on this, but unfortunately there's no source. No clear motive for the spate of scientists' deaths has ever surfaced, and with a suicide rate more than twice the national average, something was obviously amiss. Some suspect the scientists may have been selling Star Wars secrets to the Russians and were either silenced by the military or took their own lives after no longer being able to live with themselves. Uh, others suspect the scientists stumbled onto a sophisticated espionage ring and were silenced before they could reveal any information, or possibly the Russians were killing the scientists in an attempt to hinder progress of a project that would certainly have posed a threat to their country. Now it's weird because a lot of the information we've been reviewing um, is somewhat historical. Some of it is from back at that time or a handful of years after when people are still discussing it. This is an article that is the most recent that I could find on it. It is from computerweekly.com and it was written in November of 2006. Under the Freedom of Information Act, Publicly funded organizations have 20 working days to answer or notify the applicant if they need more time to answer. But none has been quite as slow as the Ministry of Defense. Its first response to my FOI request came more than six months later. I had asked about the mysterious deaths of computer programmers and scientists, some working for Marconi, some for other defense contractors, and others for the MOD and the Government Communications Headquarters, GCHQ. If the MOD had been so swamped with information that it could not answer my FOI request quickly, this would have explained its late reply. In fact, the poor official who spoke to me had spent months looking for material and found nothing at all. Not one piece of paper. The official reply was that the MOD has no recorded information on any of these cases I had mentioned. So much for the ministry's record keeping. It was as if the deaths had never happened. Now, personally, I find that extremely suspicious. It's more suspicious to me that there is no record of them even looking into this than if there would have been a record where they were just denying everything and saying, well, we determined this coroner was correct. This was indeed a sexual misadventure. This was clearly a suicide. Um, but the fact that there are no records about these deaths at all, when you have major media literally around the world talking about this potential theory, you have uh, Margaret Thatcher herself being quoted as discussing this, um, that is very, very suspect to me. And what was Marconi's comment on this? We're now reaching back to an article from the Los Angeles Times, April 8th, 1987. Marconi Limited is one of a handful of European companies directly involved in the Reagan administration's strategic defense initiative, the Star Wars program for a space-based missile defense system. But officials of the government and Marconi alike insist that none of the victims were directly involved in the program. Tony Collins, a reporter who investigated the first two deaths for Computer News, a weekly aimed at the electronics industry, says his work had led him to conclude that the three Marconi scientists were all involved in a narrow field of underwater simulation projects, an area in which he says Britain leads the world. Quote, I can't speculate on the possibility of a conspiracy, but I'm investigating possible links between those who died, he said. 
A Marconi spokesman said an internal security investigation turned up no connection among the three men. There was no collusion. They worked on separate projects at separate locations for separate companies, the spokesman said. There was no collusion. There is no conspiracy. We're satisfied. Nothing is wrong. Now, quite honestly, would you expect any other reply from a publicly traded company? Um, I myself would not. I think that that is what you were going to get regardless of whatever their investigation found. Uh, can we really trust that at, it, on its face? I don't know about that. But what happened with Marconi? Once again, jumping to a different article over at Rents.com. Marconi was recently declared virtually bankrupt after its shares fell below junk status on the UK stock exchange. Both the chairman and CEO resigned and a great many employees have lost their jobs and pensions as the share price fell from a 12 month high of 445 to only five pence. A company once worth billions is now worthless, a situation that is somewhat similar to Enron. Uh, it says that basically Marconi in later years had moved away from defense projects, tried to get into telecommunications projects, and then that industry just didn't hold up. So that's part of why they went bankrupt. If you recall that name Tony Collins that I mentioned from the LA Times article, we can see that uh, he is still around. He is on Twitter. I did send a message to Tony, haven't heard back from him yet, just wanted to see if there was any developments. He actually went on to continue investigating when it went beyond even those three people. Uh, and as a matter of fact, he even wrote a book on it. Over at Amazon, we can see Open Verdict by Tony Collins. Um, Looks like you can only buy it used and it's extremely cheap. If I do hear anything interesting back from Tony Collins, I will certainly kick on the camera and do an update and share it with all of you. But here's where I hand it over to you, Brain Scratchers. What's going on in this case? Are these deaths natural? Were these men targeted? If they were targeted, do you think they were targeted by the organizations they were working for or possibly by another country altogether? Please let me know about it in the comments down below. Uh, before you go, I also wanted to let you know we are doing a little bit of an experiment here at the Lord and Arts channel, and I want to thank um, the person that runs the Lord and Arts Facebook fan page. You might know her as That Irish Girl AC. Uh, she has worked with me to design some Brain Scratch shirts. Now, I've had many of you ask for this in the comments over the past two years. Um, I really... I kind of hesitated getting into something like that, but AC had this energy. She just really wanted to make it happen and see it go. So I worked with her on a design for a Brain Scratch shirt. I will have a link to it in the description box below. Um, I believe we need to sell a hundred of them. So if you guys want to see more merchandise related to Brain Scratch, check out the link below. See if you'd like to buy a t-shirt and do it if you would like to. And to that Irish girl, AC, Thank you so much for your help on both the Facebook page and designing this shirt. I love the way it looks. I can't wait to get one and wear it right here in front of the camera for all of you. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks for spending some time with me. I'll see you on the next show on the Lord and Arts channel.